I asked and the people have spoken. So here is your 40 minute long video. Thank you for all of the funny comments. It was quite hilarious to read a lot of these. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to 1806. <laughs> I worked a little bit last night. I didn't record any of it and it's because I think I figured myself out now after a couple years. I don't like to record myself when I don't know what I'm doing. So then what I do, I think, is I work a little bit until I gain some confidence and some understanding about what I'm doing and how I'm going to do it, and then I record. And it makes me look a lot smarter than what I am. A couple things maybe have changed in the room. You're in the back corner of the main living room right now, and you can see all this wood here. This used to be just one big pile. This, this is the bleacher wood. And there's a reason why it's here. Let me go grab something. Uh, I have lumber all over the first floor here. And it's because, well, I think in the last video, I kind of left saying that I was going to do the closets in the hallway because of not really being able to go out and get materials right now for the house. A lot of people have suggested that sheetrock places would deliver. Yeah, yeah, they do. But I'm trying to stay away from everybody, um, including delivery people. More so to that is that I want to put wood in the closets. I think I... I don't think I showed any of this. But I think I maybe uh, left last week saying that I wanted to use this old wood from the demo and put it in the closets. And somehow I thought that I had enough of this to do the closets, which is laughable now because I don't even have half of what I need. So this cannot go in the closets, but I do have a place where I'm going to put this and it's going to be in the bookshelves upstairs. I'll show you those. This is Jace's future room and the bookshelf. Just tossing in some of that wood, you can see. It's gonna look pretty awesome. We also have some of this wood still, but we're saving it for the ceiling of our master bedroom that's gonna be through that hallway someday. I put the same ceiling in here. So the ceiling in the house upstairs will all be the same. And then just to show you, this is Lily's room, her bookshelf. That will be the same old wood that's in Jace's room. That's, that's a good feeling for me to know that I have that wood. I'm going to have to plane it all down and I'm going to put it in the bookshelves and it will be awesome for the bookshelves. Just awesome. And then I was like, okay, so what am I going to use now for the closets? And it came down to where I have, I have a couple other um, wood options. And I did the math. You can't probably see this. It probably wouldn't make sense to a normal person anyways. But I, I took all the wood and I measured it very detailedly. And I did the math on how much square footage I have. This wood here, this is from the original kitchen that was actually right here in the stone side of the house. And I like this stuff. I was actually gonna use this wood on the ceiling here in the big living room, um, in those sections that I wanted to, I have to cover up my wires. I explained that in the last video, I think. This wood here, I have 107 square foot of it. I have, oh, the, the old wood I just showed you for the bookcases, I have 85 square foot of that. But wow, I'm rambling. Just so you know, I just talked for 12 minutes and we're going to see how far down I can edit that. But I, I just want to explain some things. I think I need to do that. Maybe I'll put it at the end. I should put it at the end. Okay, so this brings me to what am I doing today? Okay, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start lining the inside of my closets here downstairs. Um, and then it comes down to what are you going to use to, to line the closets with? Okay, we've talked about it. I can't use the old wood. I don't have enough. I actually don't have enough of any kind of wood for the closets. The closets actually quite a bit of space. The closets are 
176 square foot. It's a lot. So the only thing I have enough of is this bleacher material. I have a lot of this stuff. Square on both sides. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my time, cutting that on a chop saw, and I'm gonna line the closets with that. And it might not look really good right now, but it's gonna look pretty good once it's sanded and painted. And yeah, we're definitely 100% not gonna change my... <laughs> I really can't say 100% that we're not gonna paint or not paint. I, you know, we change our minds. Let me show you a little closer now to the closets. Now that I've talked your face off. Yeah, you, I mean, you can see kind of what we're doing here. I lined the back wall first, and then I lined the, the other walls here. And I'm just using my little nail gun and I'm nailing into all the studs. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, what I like about it, it's strong. I talk like a million miles an hour sometimes. I honestly should just slow my video down so then I talk slower. It's not fair that I talk so quickly. I'm kind of, I'm usually in a rush to get working because I'm just only here for so long. So sorry if I'm talking too quickly, I apologize. I've always envisioned three big doors, these big oak doors that we have, three big closets. The first closet, which is closest to what's going to be the entrance to the house, this will probably be the closet that we use the most. These other closets, I, I'm thinking about having them open. I mean, they're gonna probably have to open it the way they have to open because I can't change doorknobs. I don't wanna change doorknobs. Have I talked this to death? It's really important that I give context, I think, to our thought process and why we're doing what we're doing. I really hope that I can take the 20 minutes that I just rambled and put it into some sort of collective thought that makes sense for you guys. Uh, one thing I did is I'm envisioning where the pole is going to go. I looked online and they said the average height for a pole for your coats and stuff is five foot, which is here. Um, that seems really low to me. I naturally, I wanted to do six, which is here. And I'm like, well, this makes sense for me. But then I kind of thought about Sarah's quite a bit shorter than me. So I am gonna put it at five and then that will give me room for two shelves in here, one, uh, or maybe one shelf, it kind of depends with the light. Maybe one shelf at six foot, the uh, coat hanger at five foot. And I'm thinking, you know, this is really good, thick, uh, what's making that noise? This is good, thick, three quarter inch yellow pine, but I want to put nailers in here for where my shelves are going to be. And I have a whole bunch of scrap two by four outside. So I think you see what I'm getting at. Let's go get the scrap wood. This wood here is the old two by four wood um, that was in the barn. And I think some of it's really wonky, but I'm gonna be cutting this in really short pieces. So it's okay if it's not perfect. Quite a bit of nails, but I'll be able to get it to work. And it's all I've got right now. I just really don't have a way to safely get lumber right now. And, and ultimately there's nothing wrong with this. I was watching a funny video yesterday, guy that builds stuff on YouTube, and it said something like friends don't let friends front carry or something. There's a, there's a term to it where they, they put their tool belt on and they put it in the front like I do. I, I like a tool belt like this. It's way easier for me to access the stuff, but the proper way to wear a tool belt is like this. But to me, uh, I don't know. I mean, that's fine. I guess I could, it would cover my butt crack better. But I personally like it like this. I can reach things a lot better and it's what I'm used to. I'm surprised no one's ever picked on me for it. See like, I'm not gonna waste my time trying to take all those out just to save a 12 inch piece of board. This looks like a weapon that you would use during a zombie apocalypse. And the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna get a piece here, and a piece here, and a piece here, and a piece here. So.
I just need to put some nailers on this side that correspond with the nailers I have in this wall now. Now I can start the process of getting the bleacher material cut to the right size in the back of the closet. From like these bolt holes to these bolt holes is exactly 40 inches. So I'm kind of lucky because I don't really want to have a whole bunch of holes in the closet. So what I can do is cut these bolt holes right in half. You can slightly see where the bolt holes are. But when I put this up in the back of the closet, the next piece goes over top of it and covers that spot. going crazy with the nails and not trying to. You go through a lot of nails very quick with something like this. Look at that. That could not have been better. I always do the best cuts on camera. Now that my back wall is done, I've got my nailers in here. I can go ahead and pick one side and the other and just same thing. The one thing about using bleachers, it's really funny, is there's gum all over these. I've seen so many gum pieces. I, I have seen one piece that said like, Bobby loves Susie. <laughs> Right around in here, it's about five feet across. Where the beam is, it's four foot. This, oh, you can't see the beam. This, this beam here to the face will be four foot. The rest is five foot. This wall here is obviously less than five foot. <sighs> Just like that. I uh, talked to Sarah on the phone and she has some good opinions that we're gonna go with. First off, um, she wants, she's thinking the entrance to the kitchen is definitely gonna be this bigger opening. We've talked about that back and forth, whether it should be this big opening or where this door is. She likes this big opening. 
So if it's this big opening, when you walk through, if you want to gain access to this first closet, it's way easier to have the doorknob on the right hand side and having it swing open this way. Way easier. And then for the craft room, schoolhouse room over there, it makes more sense to have the doorknob on the right also so you can open it, you know, open it up, get what you need, close it. And then if you want everything to be the same, then this one makes more sense to be on the right hand side. Open it, get what you need, close it. This one technically could be either way. I don't I wouldn't mind if this middle door was the other way. But we're thinking most of the stuff that's stored in these two closets is going to be for school and for crafting. And so she wants these to be quicker access coming from this side of the hallway instead of that side of the hallway. Hope that makes sense. It's hard to explain, but I think I nailed it. <laughs> That's it for me today, though. I'm going home. Uh, tomorrow, I'm hoping that I can make some door jams. I've got to put some headers in for these doors. And then, you know, maybe I can get some doors set. That would be spectacular. <laughs> we will see. Bye. Good morning. Oh, let me clean the lens. I think what I'm going to do is attempt to make the door casings for the closets. Door casings really aren't uh, very difficult. I'm going to use some of the old hickory molding that I have left. I think I have just enough to make three door casings. And it's really nice, dense, thick, heavy wood, so it's perfect for these big oak doors. I wish I had more of it, to be honest, because then I would make all of them with that hickory, but this will be it for the hickory. I also need to put in some header type material up here, which I'm going to do with all scrap 2x4 stuff. Once I know how high the doors are going to go. A lot to think about here when you're setting a door, but let's, let's see. Let's see how good this goes. I just found out that all of these doors are different heights and they're not uh, like this side might be 89 inches and this side might be 89 and a half inches. So every door is wonky. This is the smallest of the two. This is the largest of the two as far as height goes. I want them to look the same here. I want them to be the same, especially for my trim. I want to put one piece of trim all the way across. The tops are all kind of the same, so it's the bottoms that have probably been cut. So I'll be cutting the bottoms, and I'm gonna make them all 88 and a quarter inches. So the way it's gonna go is my two by four is up here, and then I'm gonna leave a half inch gap for shimming. My casing is gonna be three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna have a quarter inch gap and then the door should come right to there. Does that make sense? I'm not gonna trust that my subfloor is perfect, so I'm gonna measure every single one the way I just did that one. These doors could not have been any bigger. There's like no playroom. I just wanna make sure that the two by fours are gonna be straight here or level and that string is telling me that it's dang close because it hits each one of these right where the two by fours are going. So next step is I'm gonna go get some two by four pieces and plop them in there. Such a head case, you are just a broken starlet In my nuclear vision, I see more repetition An explosion than a brand new project On, on, this is just the same song I am such a head case, you are just a broken starlet 
In my nuclear vision, I see more repetition and explosion than a brand new project. A while back, I bought this tool. It's a little handheld router. This tool is amazing for cutting the door jams where the hinges go. You can just use one of the hinges and you set your depth of cut right to eighth of an inch. I actually need to set that a little higher. All you do is a little tiny wheel right here and you just kind of Set it until you think it's good. Locks into place. Now you have to be careful with this as you're cutting. I'm gonna try to record here for a little while. I know the camera stopped recording sometime because the battery was dead. I've done this both ways with the chisel and now that I have this, this tool is amazing. I cut this door out in a matter of uh, seconds. I, I think it was less than a minute. And then I just get in there with the chisel and I clean up my lines. Now what I got to do is take the hinges off this door, get the one side of the hinge on here, screwed into place, and then I can try to set the door, knock in the pins, and see how it shuts. I'm kind of weak right now. I'm just kind of tired. It's funny I thought I could do three doors in one day. <laughs> A lot of times I try things before I put it on camera, so I always look like I'm on. I have not tried to shut this door yet. It looks good. It swings okay, as far as that goes. It can swing way open. Wow, holy, what kind of hinge is that? That door can swing all the way, whoo. That's interesting. I have a feeling it's going to be too tight. Just because of what it looked like before. Oh no. This is why I don't show things until I know it fits. I'm sure some people like the brutal honesty. So you're off about three or four razor blade thicknesses. Door here, it looks great. Hinges look good. Door on the bottom here looks very good. But as it goes up to the top, top goes in. And I don't, I don't know if it's the casing, because the casing is really good to my framing. I don't know why that door is doing that. I'm gonna see if I can get it to go into place though. I'm thinking this latch could work a little bit better. Oh, I'll probably fall apart again, but the little doorknob thing here turns, which. Oh God, goes my spring. I just use this stuff called liquid gold. 
just to clean them up as I'm, it's kind of like that payment you get for doing the work. You get to get to see the beauty. Isn't it amazing that we found these doors in a garage that sat there for 20 years? The guy thought he was going to use them, never did. Isn't it more amazing that I got them for $25 a piece? When I'm pretty sure if I was to bring these anywhere to sell, you'd get $1,000 or more. I am technically one door short for the house. And I got a quote from a door company around here that specializes in making historic doors. And to make a door that matches was two thousand dollars I'm not doing that obviously there's no way I would not spend that kind of money even if I had it couldn't be happier honestly but I'm also very tired and and a little let down that I only got one installed I was really looking to do bo both I just could not wait to finish this last door here in the hallway, so I took the rest of the day off from work, and I came here to work. Just, I really want to see it done. Now, first thing I got to do is get changed, though, because though I am using salvage material, and this sweet salvaged custom shirt that my friend drew, um, and that you can buy on Teespring, uh, you know, link in the description, the, you know, I, I don't... Maybe I feel like, you know, uh, listening to some fun music today, and I'll wear maybe, um, maybe this. Oh, there we go. Wabi Sabi, that's right. This will be perfect to listen to some sweet music as I'm working. Maybe I need a different type of motivation. Maybe I need to listen to some calming music and really get some fine woodworking going here. Um, maybe I'll try, yeah, I'm gonna try something different. Sorry, Wabi, but... I hope you understand. Oh, there we go. Some homemade home. I'll play some calm music, get my chisels out, and just try to do the best job that I can do. You know though, maybe, maybe something different would be better. Still. Yeah, let's, let's try something. Oh, oh, can you even see me right now? Oh, that's a camouflage joke. Let's, let's try one more time. Okay. You know, I think because of the salvage doors, I should just keep the salvage shirt on. <laughs> if you guys knew how long that just took me, you would probably think I'm pretty weird. <laughs> I came in last night and installed the second door. I didn't put any of it on camera though, because it's a lot like the first door. I'm going to try to bang out this third door today right now. One thing that's a little different for this third door, this old hickory molding that I'm using for the door frame, I don't have two pieces that are long enough for the left and the right hand side. I only have one. So I have to piece a piece together for one of these sides. I'm not sure if this is gonna work long term, but I'm gonna make it as strong as possible. And I'm gonna make sure that I attach the door jam to the top and to the bottom of my uh, my cut. But let me show you how I'm doing this. Cut one like this, cut one like this, and I'm gonna go together. Is it perfect? No. But is it wicked cool? Yeah. We're gonna be able to cover this side up with trim for the door trim. The inside of the closet, you'll always see this joint. <laughs> for years and years. With glue, that's going to be strong. And you can't barely see the cut.
backseat driver flying on the cover. Different faces, but they're always the same. Say they'll make you a star if you'll just sign your name. What do you think? From an old church to an old stone house. It's what I've always envisioned for this hallway. But to say that I am happy is a huge understatement. I couldn't have asked for any better tolerances with this door. It is just a sixteenth of an inch. This one's an eighth of an inch. This one's an eighth of an inch. They shut good. They're wobbly because I don't have stoppers on the inside. I will put stoppers in there. Then you won't be able to see any light coming in from them. And they'll shut more solidly. Now, when I go to case this all out, I'll be putting my dark oak right in here, which will kind of recess the doors a bit, three quarters of an inch. That's okay. That's what I wanted to do. But this, I can't even believe it. If the people we bought the house from came here and walked down this, it would seem still a little bit like their home because they always had doors on their left going through here also. Now granted, and they always had a bathroom down here in this corner. So it's like we changed everything, but then kind of made it the same. You know, you get what I'm saying? That sort of stuff makes me so happy. So it's, it's close to the way the old blueprint used to be. It had two doors, one for the basement, one was a closet, and then there was a room. I demoed this house. I remember demoing the room that was in here and the, the old hallway that had a closet just like this, had one closet. And then right here was the door to go down and into the basement. And I just remember, we've always been kind of up in the air on what we wanted this closet area to look like. This is a hallway that you'll be able to go into the main living room, kind of where you are here. So back in there. One of these holes here will go, let me show you. One of these doorways here will go into our kitchen eventually. Down the hallway goes to the bathroom. I cannot wait to show Sarah this. I might not even put anything on Instagram. I want her to see it in person first. I don't want her to see it on the screen first. This door has a wooden doorknob.
Let me show you some up close stuff. That's gonna do it for this week videos. Hallways kind of almost sort of done. I still need to do the ceilings and the first piece up there. That'll be this weekend. As always, thanks for watching. Remember to hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed and I'll see you next time I turn the camera on. Have a good week everybody. Oh, the first flower. How you doing, Harry? <laughs> How'd the boot come off so bad? Well, because there was a wrinkle in there. Oh, you need some new boots. We gotta be careful of fingers, guys. We got three doors, <laughs> three kids, and three closets. Ah! <laughs>